All right, everyone, conferences. They can be amazing, right? A total gold mine of information. Yeah. Or they can be a missed opportunity. Totally, totally. You go and you're like overwhelmed and then you don't even know what you went to. Yeah, like what did I even do at that conference? Exactly, yeah. So that's where we come in. Hello, welcome to the deep dive. This is where we take one specific topic and we go deep so you don't have to. That's us doing the hard work for you. Exactly. So today we're diving into the Workbooks Customer Summit happening tomorrow in London. Very exciting. Now, even if you, like us, are not hopping across the pond, this deep dive is all about understanding what this event tells us about the future of not just workbooks, but CRM as a whole. That's right. And for those who might not be familiar, Workbooks is a CRM tool, which stands for Customer Relationship Management. But what I find really interesting is looking at the companies that are attending, Oh yeah. you've got Everyone from media giants to manufacturers, there's even some big accounting firms in there. It seems like Workbooks is really going for a wide range of users. I love that. Yeah. So whether you're you know, a CRM expert or just starting out, there should be something in here for you. Exactly. Some really good insights. Speaking of good insights, let's jump right into it with this what's new session. I mean, that's always a fan favorite at conferences, right? Everyone wants a sneak peek behind the curtain. Oh, for sure. Especially with some of the hints they've dropped, Workbooks Labs, and something called an AI co-pilot. Ooh, intriguing. Yeah, very mysterious. And then they've got this whole, like, green theme thing going on. Oh, right. Which honestly could mean anything from, like, sustainability initiatives to they're redesigning the entire interface. We don't know. Yeah, you do wonder, are they really getting on board with that kind of, like, eco-conscious tech? I mean, it's, it's a big trend at the moment, but... The stuff that really stands out to me is this workbooks labs and the AI co-pilot. Right. Because that's hinting at something much bigger, I think. There's such a massive push right now in the CRM world towards, you know, making things hyper personalized. Mm -hmm. And of course, automation all powered by AI. It's almost as if workbooks is saying, we're going to be that all in one platform. We're going to be like the Swiss army knife of business tools. Mm. OK, now that is game changing. Like imagine one platform that manages everything from your sales and your marketing oh. to your customer support, maybe even your project management. Exactly. Attendees might be getting a glimpse into the future of how they work. OK. Yeah. Moving on, though, because one of these sessions features Aston Shaw, which, if you don't know, major accounting firm. Right. Yeah. That's really interesting, isn't it? Because it suggests that Workbooks is maybe pushing beyond just the typical sales and marketing use. I'm thinking things like professional it's services a... automation. Interesting. Yeah, so project management, you know, financial workflows. You, you could even imagine things like client onboarding being streamlined within the CRM. It really makes you realize how versatile CRM can be. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just about like closing deals. It's about managing that entire client life cycle, regardless what industry you're in. For sure. So even if you're not in finance, this session could offer a look at how to maximize efficiency in your own field, whatever that may be. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Scrolling down this agenda a little bit more, we see mention of a Force 24 integration. Okay. Now, I'll be honest. I had to do a little bit of research because I'd never heard of Force 24 before this. Yes. Okay. So for those who are like me, fill us in. What is Force 24 and why is this partnership significant? So Force 24, they're a marketing automation platform. And this integration, honestly, it's big news. I think on one hand, it shows that Workbooks is really committed to staying ahead of the curve when it comes to automation. Mm. But it's also about that user experience, making things seamless. Because imagine you've got your CRM and it directly integrates with your marketing automation platform. Oh, wow. It's streamlined. Your campaign management, your lead nurturing, it's all running smoothly, potentially on autopilot. Yeah, right. And I think, you know, if you're a competitor and you haven't got that level of integration, that could be a real problem for you. Wow. Yeah. That's a really good point, especially for any listener out there who's struggling to manage multiple platforms. Definitely. Like, that's a nightmare. This integration really speaks volumes about workbooks, dedication to helping businesses work smarter, not harder, particularly their marketing teams. Speaking of working smarter, I have to ask about this session title. It says, could you get even better results from workbooks? OK. I mean, I kind of love it. It's a little bit cheeky. <laughs> yeah, a little bit cheeky. But also, it's kind of brilliant. But also very true, right? It is. I think we'd all hold our hands up and say we probably aren't always getting the absolute best out of, you know, some of the tools and the technologies that we use. Probably. 
And the good thing is, this isn't just them saying, hey, you could be doing this better. They are actually offering something. They mentioned a CRM best practice tool. Yes. Which I imagine is giving people, you know, kind of like customized recommendations, you know, insights based on how they're using the platform. Okay. So essentially, for those who haven't heard that term before, it's like having a CRM consultant in your pocket. Exactly. Yeah. Right. It's analyzing your data. It's identifying areas for improvement, and it's guiding you towards using the system more effectively. Which, let's be honest, this could be gold for anyone who's struggling to really maximize their CRM investment, or if you're a team who are looking to optimize your workflow. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, even if you think you're a seasoned CRM user, I'm sure we're all guilty of kind of getting stuck in our ways and we're not utilizing every single feature. Yeah, 100%. This sounds like it's designed to bridge that gap, really. Yes. Okay, let's talk breakout sessions, because obviously we don't want to bore you with every single one that's going on. Of course, yeah. But there's one in particular that really resonated, especially with what we were just talking about, which is all around automation. It's this improving and automating sales execution. Great one to pick out. And I think what I like about it is that it's not just about automating for the sake of automating. Yeah. It really emphasizes that improving first and foremost. Yeah. And they've honed in on, I think, two really critical aspects of that. They talk about consistency yeah. and they also mention ideal customer profile. Mm -hmm. And what that says to me is this is about building a repeatable, scalable sales process. Okay. One that prioritizes the right leads, the right opportunities. It's about being more strategic. Right. So it's not just about closing more deals. It's about closing better deals. Exactly that. Yeah. Love that. Okay, so we've talked about the tech side of things, but this agenda also highlights something else, which is the human element of CRM. Yeah. And I think that's really important to remember. It's not all about the ones and zeros. Right. And there's this customer panel discussion that I'm really intrigued by. Yeah. Those panels always bring out such good insights, don't they? Because you're hearing from people who are actually using the platform day in, day out. Right. It's one thing for us to sit here and talk about features and benefits, but to actually see how it translates into real world results. I yeah. think that's really valuable for people. Absolutely. And, that, and not to mention, you often pick up creative solutions. Oh, for sure. Workarounds. Yeah. Yes. That you won't find in the manual, right? Yeah. Because people are like, oh, I figured out this workaround. You're like, oh. I'm going to use that. <laughs> Definitely. It's like crowdsourcing best practices. Yeah, it is. Yeah. From people who actually use the tool. And speaking of celebrating success, we can't forget these customer excellence awards that they have listed on the agenda. Ah, uh, the awards. Always good fun. But I think what's interesting, even beyond the kind of the fanfare and the celebration, is it gives you a glimpse into workbooks values. Oh, interesting. What are the criteria for winning an award? Oh. You know, what are they choosing to highlight? It's almost like they're reverse engineering their definition of what customer success looks like for them. Oh, I like that. It's true. You can learn a lot about a company by who they choose to celebrate. Mm. So if there's an award category on there that's all about innovation or customer centricity, yeah. that tells you a lot about what they prioritize. Yeah. And for anyone listening who's, you know, evaluating different CRM systems, those priorities can be a big deciding factor. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's about understanding a company's values and whether they align with your own exactly. you know, your own company culture. So it's a cultural fit as well, yeah. Hundred percent. Okay. Of course, we can't forget the other truth about conferences, which is it's not all about the formal sessions. Yeah, right? exactly. There's also this invaluable opportunity to network and connect. Yeah, because let's be honest, sometimes the most valuable conversations yeah. are the ones that happen in the hallway. 100%. You know, you bump into someone, you have a coffee break chat. Yeah. That's where you spark unexpected ideas, maybe a new collaboration. Oh, yeah. You might overhear someone talking about a challenge and you're thinking, well, we solved that. I can help you out with that. Yeah. Or even just a fresh perspective on something. Yeah. You've been thinking about it one way. You chat to someone and it completely changes your viewpoint. It's amazing how those chance conversations can lead to like aha moments. 100%. Or even, you know, valuable partnerships. Oh, yeah. Like you never know who you're going to meet, what you're going to learn. 
And I think even for the people who aren't there, the people who aren't attending in person, what we're talking about here, these insights, yeah. you can take those back and you can have these conversations internally. Yes. You know, you might say, well, they're talking about a Force 24 integration. Is that something we should be thinking about for our marketing efforts? You know, how can we create a more consistent sales process based on the workbook's best practices? Yes, I love that. You can still get that value even if you're not there on the ground. So let's pause for a second and just acknowledge that even without a plane ticket to London, yeah. we've already uncovered, I think, a wealth of valuable information. We really have. Yeah. We've explored, you know, potential new product developments. Mm -hmm. We've delved into this kind of expanding role of CRM. Yes. Looked at some strategic partnerships. Mm -hmm. And I think we've even gotten a bit of a glimpse into Workbook's long-term vision for the future of CRM. Yes. I love that. We've also learned some practical tips on how we can maximize our own CRM usage. For sure. Looked at the power of integration. Yeah. And of course, we can't forget those uh, customer insights, which are so valuable. Yeah, absolutely. But there's one more thing on this agenda that really caught my eye. Oh. And it's something that they're offering throughout the day. And honestly, it sounds almost too good to be true. Okay, now I'm intrigued. It's like they're calling them drop-in sessions. Right. Talk to support throughout the day. Right. Direct access to their support team. Wow. On demand. It seems almost too good to be true. Yeah. I mean, it's a bold move. Yeah. But honestly, I think in a world where we're so used to, like, automated menus and you're on hold for hours. Oh, it's the worst. But trying to speak to someone, it's the worst. Workbooks is actually offering something that is genuinely valuable it's immediate. It's personalized assistance from, hopefully, a human expert. It's like having an on-call tech support squad at your fingertips. Exactly. Can you imagine? <laughs> You're there and you have a question. You can troubleshoot an issue. Or even if you just want to, like, brainstorm a solution with a workbooks expert. I think it's great. Right then and there. Yeah. And, and I think it's not even just about the convenience of it. Yeah. This level of accessibility, to me, speaks volumes about their commitment to customer experience. Yeah. It goes beyond reactive support. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This is proactive partnership. It really is. I mean, they're basically saying, you know, we're invested in your success. Yes. This isn't just about making a sale. We're here to support you long term. And I think, honestly, in today's world, when you've got such a competitive landscape, that kind of customer centric approach sure. can be a massive differentiator. Huge. I'm so impressed. <laughs> okay. So there you have it. Even from across the miles, we've managed to glean some incredible insights from this Workbooks Customer Summit agenda. I know, right? It's pretty impressive. It's like we were almost there. We should get, like, we did it. I know, virtually there. Virtually there. Yeah. Okay, so to wrap up what we've learned today, we've uncovered some clues about Workbooks product roadmap, right? Yeah. Their commitment to automation. Yeah. We've talked about customer centricity. Mm -hmm. And I think we've even had a little glimpse into their long-term vision for the future of CRM. We really have, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. But, and I think this is really important, the most important takeaway, and I'm going to hand it over to you for this, because you said something earlier that really resonated. Oh, okay. Which is... Don't leave us hanging. Which is, knowledge without action is kind of useless it is it's like having a car with no engine yeah it's not going to get you very far you're not going to get anywhere exactly oh. exactly so the question is what are you our listeners what are you going to do with this information that's it yeah how are you going to apply these insights to your own business challenges your own tech stack your own customer relationships such a good point that's something for everyone to kind of take away and think about yes i love that that is the question so, as always, thank you so much for joining us for The Deep Dive. It's been a pleasure. Until next time. Bye for now. Bye. That's music to any sales manager's ears, right? Mm -hmm. More consistency, higher quality leads, a sales process running like a well-oiled machine. Absolutely, yeah. But it's not all just about the tech, is it? This agenda also highlights something else, which I think is really important to remember. Okay. It's the human element of CRM. Yeah. It's not all about the ones and zeros at the end of the day. No, for sure. And there's this customer panel discussion that I'm really intrigued by. Oh, yeah, me too. Because, you know, these panels, I think, always bring out really good insights, don't they? They do, yeah. Because you're hearing from people who are actually using the platform day in, day out. Exactly, yeah. So it's one thing for us to sit here and talk about the features and the benefits and all of that. Yeah. But to actually see 
how it translates into real world results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's really valuable for people. 100%. Yeah, because we can talk about it theoretically all day long. Totally. But until you actually see how it's done. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't really mean that much. And to mention, you often pick up creative solutions. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Workarounds, okay. things that you won't find in the manual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people are like, oh, I figured out this cool workaround. You're like, oh. I'm going to use that. I'm totally using that. Yeah, exactly. 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 It's like crowdsourcing best practices. It really. From people who actually use the tool. 100%. Yeah. And speaking of celebrating success, we can't forget these customer excellence awards that yeah. they have on the agenda. Ah, the awards. Yeah. Always a good time. Always good fun. Yeah. But I think, you know, what's interesting, even beyond the fanfare and the celebrating and all of that, is I think it gives you a little bit of a glimpse into a workbook's values, right? Like 100%. Yeah. Like what are the criteria for winning an award? Yeah. Yeah. What are they choosing to highlight? Yeah. It's like. Mm -hmm. Reverse engineering, like you said, their definition of what customer success is. Yes, exactly. Because, you know, different companies have different values. Totally. And they're going to highlight the things that are important to them. Yeah, and it's true. You can learn a lot about a company by who they choose to celebrate. Yeah, absolutely. So if there's like a, an award category on there that's all about, you know, innovation or customer centricity. Yeah, yeah. That tells you a lot about what they prioritize as a business. Exactly. And for anyone listening who's, you know, evaluating different CRM systems, those priorities can be a big deciding factor. A hundred percent. Yeah, because it's about, you know, understanding the company's values and do they align with your own, exactly. you know, your company culture, all of that. It's a cultural fit too. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And of course, we can't forget the other truth about conferences, mm -hmm. which is it's not all about the formal sessions, mm -hmm. right? That's very true. There's also this invaluable opportunity to network and connect. Oh, 100%. Yeah. With other people. Sometimes, you know, the most valuable conversations yes. happen in the hallway. 100%. You bump into someone, you have a coffee break chat. Yes. That's where you spark these unexpected ideas, you know, new collaboration. Oh, yeah. You might overhear someone talking about a challenge that they're having and you're thinking, well, we solved that. You know, yeah. I can help you out with that. Yeah. Or even just a fresh perspective on something. Yes. You've been thinking about it one way. You chat to someone completely changes your viewpoint. It's amazing how those chance conversations can lead to those like, aha moments 100 percent, yeah or even you know valuable partnerships oh. like you never know who you're gonna meet what you're gonna learn and even for the people who aren't there you know the people who aren't attending in person i think what we're talking about here these insights you can take those back yes and you can have these conversations internally yes. you know you might say well they're talking about a force 24 integration is that something we should be thinking about for our marketing effort yes you know how can we create a more consistent sales process based on the workbook's best practices i love that you can still get that value even if you're not there on the ground so let's pause for a second and just acknowledge that even without a plane ticket to london yeah We've already uncovered, I think, a wealth of valuable information. You really have, yeah. That's pretty impressive. It's like we were almost there. We should get like a, we did it. I know, virtually there. Virtually there. <laughs> okay, so to wrap up what we've learned today, we've uncovered some clues about Workbook's product roadmap, right? Yeah. Their commitment to automation. We've talked about customer centricity. And I think we've even had a little glimpse into their long-term vision for the future of CRM. We really have, yeah. Amazing. But, and I think this is really important, the most important takeaway, and I'm going to hand it over to you for this, because you said something earlier that really resonated. Oh, okay. Which is... Don't leave us hanging. Which is, knowledge without action is kind of useless. It, it is. It's like having a car with no engine. Yes. It's not going to get you very far. You're not going to get anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. Parked. Exactly. So the question is, what are you, our listeners, what are you going to do with this information? That's it. Yeah. How are you going to apply these insights to your own business challenges, your own tech stack, your own customer relationships? Such a good point. That's something for everyone to kind of take away and think about. Yes. I love that. Yeah. That is the question. Big question. The big question. So... As always, thank you so much for joining us for The Deep Dive. It's been a pleasure. Until next time. Bye for now. Bye. It's like having an on-call tech support squad at your fingertips. Right at your fingertips, exactly. If you imagine.
You're yeah. there. You're at the summit. Yeah. You have a question. You can troubleshoot an issue. Mm -hmm. Or even if you just want to like brainstorm a solution with a WorkPix expert yeah. right then and there. I think it's brilliant. And, and I think it's not even just about the convenience of it. This level of accessibility to me speaks volumes about their commitment to customer experience. Absolutely. It goes beyond reactive support. You know, yeah. this is proactive partnership. Yeah, I mean, they're basically saying we're invested in your success. Yes. You know, this is just about making a sale. We're here to support you long term. And I think, honestly, in today's world, when you've got such a competitive landscape, that kind of customer centric approach sure. can be a massive differentiator. Huge. I'm so impressed. OK, so there you have it. Even from across the miles, we've managed to glean some incredible insights from this workbook's customer summit agenda. I know, right? It's like we were almost there. We should get like a, we did it. I know, virtually there. Virtually there. Right. Okay, so to wrap up what we've learned today, we've uncovered some clues about workbook's product roadmap, Rye. Yeah. Their commitment to automation. We've talked about customer centricity. And I think we've even had a little glimpse into their long-term vision for the future of CRM. We really have, yeah. Amazing. But, and I think this is really important, the most important takeaway, and I'm going to hand it over to you for this because you said something earlier that really resonated. Oh, which is don't leave us hanging. Which is knowledge without action is kind of useless. It is. It's like having a car with no engine. Yes. It's not going to get you very far. You're not going to get anywhere. Exactly. Either. Exactly. So the question is, what are you, our listeners, what are you going to do with this information? That's it. Yeah. How are you going to apply these insights to your own business challenges, your own tech stack, your own customer relationships? Such a good point. That's something for everyone to kind of take away and think about. Yes. I love that. That is the question. The question. The big question. So as always, thank you so much for joining us for the deep dive. It's been a pleasure. Until next time. Bye for now. Bye.